is Mystery Meats Fine Dining Podcast, helping foodies discover new restaurants and new friends. Here's your host, the founder of Mystery Meat, Seth Ressler. Hello, and welcome to Mystery Meats Fine Dining Podcast. I'm your host. My name is Seth Ressler, and this is the podcast for people who like to travel and they like to eat. We uh, talk to local foodies, local food bloggers, get their restaurant recommendations, their takes on the cities that we live in. And today, what happens in Vegas is going to leave Vegas. We're going to talk to Michelle Wong, who runs the Cravings of a Fat Girl blog. Uh, we're going to talk to her about her blog. We'll talk to her about the city of Vegas. We'll get her restaurant recommendation. And then finally, we will play a game we call Out of the Frying Pan. Before we get to all that, I do want to mention Mystery Meat. want to tell you what that is. Uh, Mystery Meat's a social dining group that we started in Boston. It's a bunch of foodies who get together to have a great meal, to get together with other people who are foodies, and basically just break bread and talk about food for a couple of hours. It's a lot of fun. We've just done our first dinner in San Francisco. Uh, We've been doing them in Boston, and we're starting to bring them to other cities around the country. If you want a Mystery Meat dinner in your city, all you got to do is go to mysterymeat.org and click the big orange button that says get an invitation. I should mention there's one small detail about these Mystery Meat dinners. It's kind of important. You don't actually find out where you're going to go have dinner until 24 hours in advance. So this is for adventurous foodies only, but if you're brave enough, go to Mystery Meat, click on the big orange button, and I get on the invitation list. All right, let's talk to Michelle Wong. Michelle! Hi! Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for having me. All right, so you run a blog called Cravings of a Fat Girl. Yes, I do. And I have to admit, I was actually, I, I felt like I'd be insulting you if I said the name of your blog. <laughs> <laughs> but then I read that you're, you're not actually a fat girl. Well, I, I don't think so. It's kind of based off of how I was a chubby kid as a child and definitely liked food, had a lot of fat rolls on my body. And it's not to be controversial, but just based off of how I was as a kid. And I still love food. So tell me how you started blogging. I mainly started because I started going out and eating at all these different places and I had trouble kind of remembering what I was eating. So it was a way to organize my thoughts and kind of remember what dishes were good at what restaurant. And four years later, here I am. All right. And you've now been officially published on CheapFlights.com? Yep. My first official piece. So what was that? It was uh, recommendations for Las Vegas Eats. So a bunch of different lists on, say, things like um, good places to have late night eats or um, good places to have a good drink. So different lists on there. You are also a Las Vegas native. Yep, born and raised. What do you call somebody who's from Las Vegas? Las Vegan. Las Vegan, okay. Yeah. Las Vegan sounds like you don't eat meat. Yeah, definitely not vegan. (laughs) (laughs) So tell me, what is Vegas like for somebody who is a native there as compared, you know, I mean, I've been, but I've been for the touristy reasons I come in, you know, we stay at the casinos and we gamble. If you live there day in and day out, how is what you see in the city different? I think with Las Vegas, there's a lot of culture that people don't see off the strip. When people fly in, all they think about is the gambling, the dancing, the drinking, But outside of the Strip, there's a lot of culture, there's museums, there's a lot of food, a lot of nice mom-pop restaurants that people are missing out on. You know, in your day-to-day life, do you see tourists all day, every day, or do you deal with a lot of people who are other natives? I deal with locals every day. So we basically have a normal life. Um, Our Strip malls are filled with uh, mom-pop shops and small businesses. So I would say the normal Las Vegas Outside of the Strip doesn't see tourists, unless you work on the Strip. Gotcha. So tell me about some of the dining districts in Las Vegas, especially those besides the Strip that, that people might not know about. I would say there's a, maybe four I would categorize. Uh, there's uh, the Summerlin area. There's the Green Valley area. There's the Chinatown area. And then definitely something up and coming is the downtown area. That's definitely flourishing. So with the Summerlin area, there's a mix. It's kind of your hip place, but with a lot of cougars hanging around, a lot of nice happy hours, um, but a lot of good food. And I would say Green Valley across the valley is a similar mirror image. There's a lot of good food over there. Uh, Chinatown, 
definitely a lot of good food. If you're looking for Asian food, you've got all kinds. Thai food, Chinese food, Japanese food, all kinds of stuff. When you go out to eat, how much of it is off the strip and how much of it is on the strip? I would say 80% of my eating is off the strip. Most locals don't go to the strip. We try to avoid it. So is it you know, considered overpriced and touristy or is it? It's touristy. We try to avoid it because of the traffic or just going down there and parking. But going to the strip has its advantages because there's all these famous chefs cropping up all in different properties. So we do have a chance to try really, really good food. So let's talk about them. Who are some of the famous chefs that are cropping up in Vegas? Well, uh, we've got our good old standbys like Thomas Keller. Um, We've got Mario Batali, Bobby Flay. He's got the Mesa Grill. And then um, Gordon Ramsay's coming up. He's got some new properties coming in. Yeah, we just got a lot. Have you tried any of Ramsay's places yet? I haven't, but uh, Gordon Ramsay has a steakhouse that has been generating a lot of buzz. They have this dish, the Beef Wellington, that's supposed to be really tender, and it cooks for 45 minutes before it hits the table. Wow. So that's the buzz with Gordon Ramsay there. Normally, a dish takes 45 minutes to hit the table. He comes out and he starts swearing at you. Yeah. (laughs) So if I'm a foodie, uh, is there a particular time of year that I should be looking to come to Vegas? Honestly, I think all year round, there's a lot of food opportunities. But if you want to not get baked in the heat, I would choose either fall or spring. The weather's perfect around that time. And what is perfect in Vegas? Because I know it gets hot. I mean, you're in the middle of a desert. It gets hot there. Uh, Well, we have dry heat. So dry heat isn't so sticky. So I think comfortable for us during the day, I would say 90 And then when it drops to 80, it's perfect. (laughs) Nice. What about the big food events? Are there uh, certain things that are worth coming out to check out? Mm, There are a lot of wine festivals. Just recently, we had a food and wine festival at the Red Rock Casino. That one's a good one. Also, another good wine festival would be at the Mandalay Bay. It's called the Wine Amplified Festival. It features a rock band. And this year, it was Young the Giant. And you also get to hang around their beachside setting. So it's their uh, faux beach, their fake beach. And you get to drink wine and rock out to music. That sounds like a good time. Yeah. All right, let's talk about your restaurant recommendation. I asked you to recommend a great place to go eat in Vegas. Mm -hmm. What did you suggest? I suggested Parma by Chef Mark. It's a great hole-in-the-wall Italian restaurant right off the strip. Well, not right off the strip. You do have to go off the beaten path and drive a little ways, but it's the best Italian food I've had outside of Italy. So tell me a little bit about Chef Mark. What do we know about the guy? Chef Mark, um, I know he's been in the restaurant business for quite a while. He started off in New York. Um, His family ran an Italian restaurant there, Uh, moved to Florida and opened up a few restaurants there, but... I guess he was looking for a challenge, and he moved to Vegas to open up a couple restaurants, but his last project, of of course, is Parma by Chef Mark. Nice. So when you get there and you walk in, what's the vibe like? It's very cozy. It's definitely not pretentious. I would say it's one part deli, and then right in the middle, it's one part living room. They've got couches right in the middle where you can eat and just hang out. And then uh, around it is a regular restaurant. So this sounds much more low-key and kind of chill than a lot of places you might find in Vegas. Very low-key. Definitely you can dress down, come in wearing whatever you want, and just eat really good food. Nice. Let's talk a little bit about the cuisine. I mean, when I sit down, pull out the menu, and start looking at the appetizers, what do you recommend? Appetizers. His number one top seller is the portobello mushroom appetizer. And it doesn't sound like much, but it's got this creamy sauce, four cheeses, mixed with the portobello mushroom chunks. And then you pour it all over this bed of baby spinach. And it it sounds heavy, but it's so light at the same time. It's the best thing on the menu. Mm, That sounds good. Uh, What about a main dish? Anything that I should be looking at in particular? Main dish, my favorite there is uh, the chicken marsala. You don't get that every day because the menu rotates. 
or it doesn't rotate. It just depends what's fresh that day. But the chicken marsala, when it's cooked, it's so tender. And you can get just that slight taste of the wine cooking in there. And the mushrooms mixed all together. It's the best chicken marsala I've ever had. What, um, what other dishes should I be trying? Definitely try anything with the bolognese sauce. That's his baby sauce. Um, it's very hearty. It's got a lot of meat of beef and pork, carrots, peas, tomatoes, and it's stewed. It's the best. You mix it with his um, fresh pasta. My favorite would be to mix it with the parpadelli pasta. It's the thick ribbon fettuccine. And it just makes it so good. It's, it's hefty. It sticks to your ribs. It'll fill you up for sure. And if I were to take a look at the wine list or beer list here, what are they serving to pair with my dish? Um, definitely a lot of Italian wines. They got a mix of a lot of Italian wines, a lot of California wines, and then definitely they have a Italian beer. So my favorite of my husband is the Peroni. Uh, and what about dessert? What do you recommend? Anything fresh that day, but we've always loved the tiramisu. It's got the lady fingers soaked in with the espresso. It's fresh made every day. So we went on Friday again to eat, and uh, they just ran out of the batch for the day, and we got the batch for the next day. So it was definitely fresh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And uh, I was checking this out online, and it looks like they've actually got this uh, wood fire stove on wheels. Yeah, it's supposed to be uh, maybe once a week. I think it's on a Wednesday, and they do pizza. So if I'm, uh, if I'm going to Parma, uh, how much money can I expect to drop on the meal? If you're a hungry person and you don't mind eating carbs, I'd say $30 per person. This is not a terribly expensive place, then. This isn't going to really break the bank. It is not. You're going to come in comfortable. It's not pretentious. The staff is great. They're passionate about their own food. And you're not going to leave poor. Ooh, all right. You ready to play a little game? All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this game is called Out of the Frying Pan. Here's how it works. I'm going to ask you for some recommendations, and you can give them to me right off the top of your head. No wrong answers. All right? You ready? I'm ready. All right, I've come to Vegas. I've just won big at the craps table. Money is no object. Where should I go out to eat? I would go to Guy Savoie because it is opulence. It is a full course French fine dining meal that you won't regret. The bread cart by itself will impress you. Uh, let's say I've lost everything. I'm wiped out. I got no money after an evening of gambling. I need to get a decent meal on a budget. Where can I find that? I think you should uh, walk up the strip and go to Gordo's Tacos or Tacos by Gordo's. You'll get some cheap, really good tacos there just by walking up the strip. Nice. All right, I'm in town for a business conference lunch, and I want to impress everybody that I'm with because I want to take them to a cool place that's off the strip. Where's the best place to go for a business lunch? Vintner Grill in Summerlin. They've got, um, they're off the strip for sure, and they've got this nice outside dining area. It makes you feel like you're not in Vegas, maybe more like in California, and it's great fresh American food. I'm in town with uh, a party of 11. We may or may not be planning to rob three casinos later that evening. Okay. Where's the best place to take a large party? Large party? Hmm. Let me think about that one. If they're guys and they want to have fun, I would take them to Sugar Factory. They take reservations and they've got a nice uh, variety of dishes there that will please everyone in the, the group. Nice. All right, what if I'm in town with a bunch of girls? Let's say it's a bachelorette party and we're in town for Vegas. Where would you go? Hmm. Well, I guess I'm a little biased. I just went to Bouchon and Venetian for a bachelorette party. And the food was fantastic, and the service was quick because we had to get out of there at a certain time. All right. If there's a place that's uh, unknown or underrated or y you don't want the tourists to know about, you're glad that only the locals know about it, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. Hmm. It would be Raku. Raku is a Japanese restaurant in town. It's really fresh every day, and it's only a tiny little spot just maybe five minutes off the strip 
I don't want people going there and making <laughs> it overflowed with tourists there. Don't worry. Nobody listens to my podcast. It's fine. <laughs> All right. If I'm uh, in town with kids, what's the best restaurant to bring the whole family to? I would take them to Hot and Juicy Crawfish. It's a Cajun seafood place, 10 minutes off the strip, also in the Chinatown area. And you get down and dirty with your seafood, so it's perfect for the kids. They could just run around and get down and dirty with you. All right, last question. Uh, what place has the best decor, the coolest vibe? I would say uh, Joel Robuchon in the, the MGM. It looks like it's made of gold. It's like a French castle in there. You walk in there and you feel like you do have to sit up nice and straight, but <laughs> <laughs> the food is great and it's beautiful in there. All right. Great job. See, you, you're a pro at this. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Parma by Chef Mark. And that's Mark with a C, M-A-R-C, uh, is located at 7591 West Washington Avenue, number 110 in Las Vegas. Uh, you can check it out online, www.parma by Chef Mark. That's Mark with a C dot com. Uh, and what if they want to find you, Michelle? How can people follow you online? They can go to cravingsofafatgirl.com. Nice. And are you on Twitter or anything like that? Yep, I am CFG Foodie. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to us. This is really interesting to me. I get to see a side of Vegas that I've never seen before. It's uh, great to talk to a native. I'm happy to talk about it. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been Mystery Meets Fine Dining Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ressler. A couple of notes. Uh, again, if you want us to start a Mystery Meat dinner group in your city, all you have to do is go to mysterymeet.org and click the big orange button to get an invitation. Uh, if you enjoy this podcast, do us a favor. Go on to iTunes and just leave a uh, review there. And if you're a blogger and you want to make a restaurant recommendation for your city, go to Mystery Meat and uh, just click the Contact Us link and we'd be happy to feature you on an upcoming episode of the show. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. This has been Mystery Meat's Fine Dining Podcast. You can find links to the websites mentioned in this episode at mysterymeat.org slash podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>